Okay, and welcome back to Kappa Gravity. And today, um, okay, first of all, I'm very sorry for these hiatus, hiatuses and me suddenly disappearing. But um, yeah, um, I'm just a little bit busy with college itself and I'm thinking of ideas for the channel. But today, um, we're going to be doing a, an experiment, a hypothetical experiment, a theoretical experiment. Where I have a cat boy. I have a cat boy over here. Let's say this is a cat boy. And I shoot a laser at him. A really powerful laser. Or, you know, I'm going to launch an object. So I have a projectile. Let's say it's a bullet. Let's say it's a bullet and then I shoot it towards the the cat boy so usually this thing has a kinetic energy measured in joules so measured in joules J would be one half M V squared or it's one half times the rest mass M zero times the magnitude of my four velocity uh, my v alpha squared so i launch it from a certain reference frame or a certain lorentz frame over here no like this and let's say it just let's say it um travels um significantly lower than the speed of light of course if it travels close to the speed of light of course there's gonna be a corresponding factor gamma which is of course my relativistic factor um, and of course yeah you guys already know that stuff so of course I have my four vector um, which is C gamma and gamma times V where V is of course my three velocity so yeah and you just take the magnitude of that and then square it and then multiply it by the rest mass then divide it by two and then you get the kinetic energy of my bullet that i um, launched at my cat boy okay so right or if i'm shooting a laser at it of course your laser is going to be measured in either of course its frequency but from that you can easily derive the energy the energy of course is also going to be measured in joules so okay i shoot my laser at my cat boy what I want to find out with this experiment is what does it take to blow up my cat boy? Of course, your, your laser, the laser that you use to shoot at the cat boy will only be powerful to a certain extent. There will be a certain energy level wherein it doesn't do anything to your cat boy aside from mildly scorching his skin. And likewise with the bullet, it will, it will reach some energy wherein it will just simply pass through them or it will just bounce off their skin so this threshold that i want to talk about today is called the gravitational binding energy so the gravitational binding energy and considering that um we're mostly just considering um spherical so um spherically spherically symmetric cat boys um the following equation is actually pretty a pretty good estimate for your gravitational binding energy so the gravitational binding energy which i will call e sub b is given by negative 3 g m squared over 5 r so R, of course, here is the radius of your cat boy's world sphere. It's the radius of the world sphere. And M is, of course, the mass of your cat boy. And G, of course, is your gravitational constant. So your universal, universal Newtonian gravitational constant.
and that's it. So your, so your gravitational binding energy is the is inversely proportional to the radius of the world sphere, and it is directly proportional to the mass of your cat boy by a certain factor 3g and a certain inversion factor factor 3g m squared so what did you know so let's say your cat boy weighs 50 kilograms okay weighs 50 kilograms and then um let's say he has a height of Let's say more or less uh, one meter and a half, or no, three meters and a half. So three point three point five meters. That may be tall, but let's just say, for the sake of example, his gravitational binding energy E E B. Sorry, it's not E B. Will then be negative three times the gravitational constant G. I'm not going to state it anymore times 50 squared over um, 5 times 3.5 uh, 3.5 joules so you can simplify that the negative 3 times uh, 50 squared is just a uh, 250 3 times 250 so 3 times 250 is 7 uh, 7 50 I think and that's 3 times 250 G over 5 times 3.5 so that makes uh, 15 and then 16.2 no 70.2 right there 17.5 17.5 7 and then this is joules of course we can simplify that further into um, 6 and then carry the 1 this is 7 trust a math professor to not get this through quickly um zero five it's okay and then this is g over 17.5 joules so that's the gravitational binding energy so what does 750 times the gravitational constant over 17.5 joules mean so what i mean by this uh, what I mean by this is that, okay, this is supposed to be like a um, positive, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So uh, it, it's somewhere in the, it's, it must be positive. Um, it's going to end up positive. I think the gravitational constant G is negative, so it's going to cancel. But what does this mean? What does, this, what does these numbers mean? So it, it means that if I fire something at my cap boy, and its energy exceeds this energy, so its kinetic energy exceeds this, um, this number, these numbers, then my cat will essentially explode. Not only explode, but you will like disintegrate in a way wherein he is not bound to himself anymore. So, um, for example, the Earth. Let's say, let's say I have a cat boy that's, let's say I have an astronomical cat boy that roughly has the same radius as the earth and has the same mass as the earth and um let's say that yeah um is perfectly symmetric uh perfectly spherically symmetric so then his gravitational binding energy or so okay let's let's say let's call it the gravitational binding energy gbe of the earth is in fact so let me get this right let's try this right um 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules so that that's my gravitational binding energy of my cat boy that's that loosely resembles the earth has the same mass has the same radius um for the world sphere so that's 
I need to exceed this number, this energy level, in order to blow it up. So if I'm gonna shoot a laser, or if I'm gonna shoot some, um, some missile at it, I need their kinetic energy. So I need the kinetic energy of the missile to exceed 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules, or I need the total energy of that laser that I shoot at it to exceed 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules. Now, if I have a Dyson sphere, which is basically a collection of mirrors around a star or a sun, um, I would have enough energy to actually blow up the Earth. It's way overkill. It's way overkill, but um, there it is. Okay, so that's the gravitational binding energy of a certain astronomical object, or well, of course, our astronomical cat boys. <laughs> So compared to compared to the Earth, actually, the gravitational binding energy of this one over here is actually lower because we have a lower mass and we have a lower radius. But I must note that as the radius goes down, as the, ra as the radius gets larger, I mean smaller and smaller, the gravitational binding energy actually increases. It takes more and more energy to destroy it because of course um, because the gravitational binding energy is is inversely proportional to the radius as my radius approaches zero my energy will asymptotically approach infinity so it will keep going up the energy will keep going up exponential actually um, you, um, at zero so if my radius is zero basically I have a point I have a point mass and it will require an infinite amount of energy to blow it up. However, if that makes any sense, because that doesn't make any sense because um, a point has no dimensions. And so I don't know how that will work. Maybe the, the physics breaks down. So now also with the mass, especially the mass, if the mass increases also, but the radius stays the same, my energy will also exponentially increase because I have an exponent of two here and I also have an extra factor 3g but of course that's still divided by 5r nonetheless if I decrease the radius and I increase the mass my gravitational binding energy will also simultaneously increase so if I force feed my cat boy more food of course his his world sphere will increase his height will increase some by some factor but also his mass will increase by some factor and so his gravitational binding energy will increase but of course we don't live in an ideal universe so that universe either dissipates by um, them spinning or maybe them doing some other things they're gonna lose energy so the gravitational binding energy also decreases with that and the same holds for stars because our Sun continually um, loses mass as, um, as it lives, or as it continues existing. So now that I've given you guys a, or an overview of gravitational binding energy, so the concept of gravitational binding energy, let's actually derive this thing. So deriving this thing is rather straightforward. So I'm gonna assume, let's assume I have a spherical asymmetric uniform mass with radius r. Okay, that's a good start. So, let's imagine that this mass is made out of small um, spherical shells. Small, small shells. Or small balls that um, the amount sort of reaches towards infinity. So a large amount of balls. So the more balls you have in this shell of radius R, the better for approximation. And let's say that I want to pull apart. I want to pull apart these balls. So that, that's essentially the thing that we want to find the, um, to derive the gravitational binding energy. So let's assume a constant density rho. So, okay. So I have my shell, so the mass of the shell, so the mass of the shell will of course be 4 pi r squared times rho, 
times a small radial element dr and the mass of the interior of my body not my body but you know the body in our example is then of course four thirds pi r cube times rho density because of course my density is my mass per unit volume so uh, mass per unit volume so next my du so du or my deb so the required energy for the shell is the negative of the gravitational potential energy and you guys already know that that's g times big m little m over r so shell times m interior over r so to find this deb i need to integrate both sides to get rid of that differential so i'm going to integrate both sides deb so that gives me the negative integral of g m shell m interior over r dr so i made the grid with respect to r and we're gonna run the limits of this integral from zero so this goes from zero to uh the radius r so my final integral will look like this so my integral from zero to r of negative g times m shell which is four pi r squared rho okay uh, pi r squared rho times four over three pi r cubed rho over r dr so this is my final integral so i can pull out that negative g to the front so this gives me zero to r this is a relatively simple integral so my r's cancel out and my four turns into a 16 divided by three so i can pull out that 16 divided by three to the front in um which uh, accompanies the g at the front so g times 16 over 3 and my r's cancel out leaving me with an uh, r squared times r cubed which gives me r to the fifth divided by r minus one that's r to the fourth this is pi r to the fourth um times rho dr now rho the density is constant so i can pull it out also with that um pi squared sorry that's pi squared so this gives me negative g 16 over 3 times pi squared rho times the integral from 0 to r of r small r to the fourth dr and the antiderivative of r to the n is just, you know, your casual integral. So the antiderivative of my um, y to the n dy is just 1 over n plus 1, y to the n plus 1 plus c. Of course, if you're dealing with a definite integral, that one, that c goes away. So this would be negative g. 16 over 3 times pi squared rho and then i have my one fifth r to the 5 evaluated from 0 to r big r and so this clears out very nicely to negative g 16 over 15 pi squared rho squared times r to the fifth
Now, recall that the density is equal to the mass of the entire thing divided by its volume, okay? And this is assuming my body has um, uniform density. So what I mean by this uh, is rho is equal to the mass of the entire thing, m, over 4 thirds pi r cubed, which is the volume of the entire thing. Now, if I plug this thing, if I plug the entire thing into the equation, I would get that the that Eb, the gravitational binding energy, if you want the complicated version, is g negative g, 16 over 15 pi squared r to the fifth times m over 4 thirds pi r cubed, all being squared. And clearing out the equation, we get negative 3 over 5 g m squared over r. So we're done. So it was a rather trivial exercise in integrals and, um, of course, your basic cosmology. So that's my gravitational binding energy. So this is an actually this is a relatively short lecture because the gravitational binding energy is a really trivial topic. But if we're talking about interstellar war between civilizations, or maybe even like if you want to consider like gigantic astronomical cat boys like fighting each other, I suppose this is a very important thing you need to consider while they duke it out in space um they need to like shoot lasers or shoot projectiles at each other that exceeds their respective gravitational binding energies so of course a bigger cat boy fighting against a smaller cat boy the bigger one has the advantage because they have a much much higher gravitational binding energy and it will be harder for the small guy to launch a projectile that has enough kinetic energy to exceed that gravitational binding energy. And of course, it will be easier for that big guy to launch a projectile towards, you know, the, the smaller guy because E equals mc squared, you know? And converting mass to energy, I'm pretty sure those cat boys can do that or something if they're advanced enough. So there's that. This is my gravitational binding energy. So I didn't need to do much with deriving it from um, the Schwarzschild um, stuff. All right. So what is there what else is there to talk about about this? Actually that's it for this lecture. So uh do expect some more from me. Um it's just that I'm really busy nowadays and I'm not able to think up lectures and actually do them because a lot of things to do in college. Surprise, surprise, college is actually very it makes you very busy and not have time to do stuff. So I guess I'll see you guys then in the next lecture.